Go ahead, sir. All right. Good afternoon, board. Uh, I'm Halston Rowe with, with Rosen Electric. Uh, we are founded in 1919 and uh, celebrating 100 years as the electrical contractor. Uh, Rosen is one of the largest renewable energy contractors, having installed more than 2,400 megawatts of wind and solar. In the last 40 years, we've installed more than 403 megawatts of battery energy storage. We are experts in DC power, electrical code, safety procedures, protective equipment, and all that it takes to do these installations effectively and safely. We have more than 13, or we have more than 1,300 uh, state-certified electricians working all over the state and 4,000 nationwide. Um, in our 40-plus years of battery energy storage work, while we've mastered every essential battery technology and application, uh, battery chemistries and systems have become much larger and a lot more powerful. Uh, current batteries are potentially much more dangerous if they're not handled with the utmost skill. Today, um, and so I'll basically, so three key points, solar PV systems and battery energy storage systems are completely different and separate. Um, battery system work, whether paired with solar or not, is without a doubt um, electrical work, not solar work. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Then non-electricians who install solar are definitely not qualified to install and maintain battery systems. And, with, and uh, so Rosen Electric strongly urges this committee today recommend to the board that all facets of battery energy storage work to be performed by California C10 electrical contractors. Uh, thank you for your time. I'd like to thank the uh, CLS, CSLB for uh, hearing me. Uh, my name is Pete Cherson. I'm the training director for the San Francisco Joint Apprenticeship Training Trust. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there was a few apprentices that uh, chose to join me on the journey from San Francisco. I'd like them to stand up, please. Uh, thanks, guys. I have 25 years uh, uh, field experience and the last seven uh, at the apprenticeship program. Um, <clears throat> our students are OSHA 10 trained uh, prior to on-the-job training assignments and uh, they're OSHA th they get OSHA 30 in their fifth year. <clears throat> I too went through the same program <clears throat> and there was a gentleman up here who said that we, um, we see a, 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 a class and we don't do it for four years or motor controls or whatever. That's not true because there is uh, journeyman training that is continuous throughout our career. Uh, I've taken PV courses, uh, East SAMTAC courses uh, throughout. So we're well versed on, on the changing technologies of the time. Uh, all, in my opinion, all PV energy systems must be uh, completed safely and installed by qualified general electricians. Uh, they should be trained by an approved California State Apprenticeship uh, program and employed by a C-10 contractor. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Joel Koppel. I'm a mayor's appointed planning commissioner in San Francisco as well as a graduate of our uh, San Francisco Local 6 Apprenticeship uh, Joint Program. Um, I wanted to clarify uh, the fact that the opposition, I think, is underemphasizing the need for um, comprehensive training. Uh, I, heard, I haven't heard about theory and troubleshooting today, so uh, not just should you be able to install plug-and-play systems or put something together if it doesn't work, which often a lot of times things don't work, you need to be able to figure out what's wrong with it and how to make it work. Uh, you can't do that unless you are properly trained and have the background with the theory involved not just you know, putting black wires to black wires and white wires to white wires. You have to understand how the electricity works for you to safely troubleshoot and operate something to make it work correctly. We, uh, we had an incident 10 years ago where a gentleman was killed trying to change a light bulb. Um, being qualified people as we are, not just can we change a light bulb, we can actually test the light fixture to see what the actual problem is before we even finish it. So our comprehensive five-year training is what makes us better installers for this dangerous work. Also, um, on Tuesday, March 12th, uh, at our city and county of San Francisco Board of Supervisors hearing, um, our city unanimously approved uh, a resolution urging the Contractor State License Board to ensure the battery energy storage systems are installed by valid C-10 electrical contractor license holders. That came from our city and our county and was unanimously approved. And if you've been following our politics, we don't often agree on a lot. So anything 
uh, approved unanimously is a big deal. Um, and uh, seriously, again, look forward to you guys. Uh, um, we're looking to hear uh, the <coughs> number one uh, option as a result. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Innett. I'm the president of Local 230 Farm, Monterey, California. Uh, safety for the California workers, along with the public, is going to be at risk. Non-electrical solar installers who aren't C46, they work for a C46 licensed contractor. They have no state requirements for the training and certification. Uh, electrical certification has been a big part of California and it's been very successful. C10 licensed electrical contractors understand how to perfect, protect consumers from electrical hazard, which are number one cause of fires. Now, according to the Electrical Safety Founda Foundation, oh, I can't read, uh, improperly installed and or maintained electrical equipment caused more than 53,000 home fires in the U.S. each year. So electrical work, including solar and battery storage, is increasingly complex and dangerous. Energy storage batteries are now primary lithium, not lead acid like they used to be, which makes them far more dangerous. Uh, all battery work storage, all battery energy storage work, no matter what energy source is paired with, is electrical work and should be performed by contractors with a C10 contracting license. Now, I've heard a couple contractors in here say they're both C10 and C46 contractors. I don't know what their problem is because they're licensed to do both. Or maybe there are C10 uh, electricians don't know as much as the C46. I don't know. So, but one thing is you, you're going to have the C46 digging into electrical panels, tying in, putting in breakers in electrically charged panels. So it's going to be dangerous. It's not worth it. Vote one. My name is Alan Sloan, and I'm a safety professional. Um, and wanted to finish up a statement. While I believe that statement from the CSLB regarding uh, known, no known injuries or fatalities to be true, this is based on Cal OSHA's data. So I'm not surprised by the stated results. Keep in mind that this Excuse is. Excuse me, sir. Did yes. you already testify? Yeah. Okay, we're, we're only doing two minutes for commentary. Yeah, I thought, you, I thought you could okay. come back. Okay, Let, let's clarify here. You guys are going to have, you, everyone's going to have another opportunity to talk for a minute. Okay. Um, after the next agenda item. So fresh faces only. Go ahead, sir. How fresh is this face? <laughs> Pretty fresh. <laughs> hey, good afternoon. Um, I want to thank you guys for your time. I know this has um, been a long day for you as well. My name is Stephen Booker, and I'm a journeyman electrician. I've been an electrician for over 20 years. Um, during those years, I've seen exciting advancements in the electrical industry, including growth, the growth of solar and development of battery energy storage systems. However, while these systems can be, can and will be increasingly pair solar voltaic systems, they are highly distinctive and separate codes, separate systems, subject to their own inherent risks, technical specifications, codes, installations, and fire safety hazards. To become a certified electrician, I was required to, by the state of California to complete a minimum of 8,000 hours hands-on experience and pass a demanding comprehensive state examination. Energy storage systems, installations, construction, and fire safety standards have become increasingly complex and specialized as the technology has evolved from the early days of 12 volt lead acid batteries. Battery, battery energy storage systems now vary widely in type and size. Each type of system can carry distinct risk and unique installation requirements. My fellow state certified electricians and I have expertise in all forms of electrical work and hold a thorough understanding of the National Electrical Code and that's why we can do battery storage work safely. In conclusion, there should be no doubt that battery energy storage work is electrical work and should be, be, be performed by electrical contractors with a C10 license. I support the consumer safety mission of the CSLB and trust this committee will come to the same conclusion. 
I support number one. Thank you. Hello, my name is Steve Campbell, Policy Project Manager at Grid Alternatives. Grid Alternatives is the largest nonprofit solar developer in California. We work exclusively with low income and vulnerable customers across the state. I'm basing my comments today on the established record. Changes require collecting substantial evidence in the record to prove a change is necessary, in addition to performing an industry, fiscal, and economic impact assessment. What evidence is there to prove a change is necessary? The record shows no incidents. The required economic impact assessment of $100 per unit did not seem to be created in a cohesive, or sorry, <clears throat> in a cohesive, co uh, consensus-driven manner, so the threshold for change has not been met. Unnecessarily raising the costs makes it much harder for grid alternatives to provide clean energy technologies to low-income Californians. These are the same customers that need solar pit storage the most to deal with rising energy costs and the other impacts climate change will bring and is bringing. I agree with the California Energy Commission and vote number four, take no action. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I've been a licensed contractor since 1981. My name is John Roosh. I've held B classification. I personally uh, work for a company that also has an A license and a C10 license. Uh, this company has been installing solar since 2008. Um, and I just feel, thank you for your time, I feel that this um, proposal is backed by unions and utilities. All solar contractors have experienced utilities' reluctance to expand solar. We all know that solar threatens their business model. This is what motivates them to propose these license restrictions. Unions want all labor to be done with union labor. That is their interest here. We wonder how PG&E can rationalize sending their customers numerous warnings that they can expect power outages and wind events, while at the same time supporting an initiative that will make backup storage unaffordable for most of these customers. If this goes through, it will result in a severe shortage of solar workers. It will also result in thousands of qualified installers being put out of work. Solar contractors know that the installers are often the entry-level construction workers who move on to skilled craftsmen. They are the future electricians, the operators, the project managers, and ultimately company owners. The worker shortage will drive up the cost of solar to the point where many, if not most, of the affected projects will be uneconomic. Contractors won't have the craft resources to build their work they already have under contract. The losers will be the installers, contractors, customers, and California's ability to meet the green energy goals and mandates. The data doesn't support the need for this initiative you would not be solving a safety issue. Statistics show that that does not exist. There is no evidence to support a quality-related need for this proposal. This is a solution in search of a problem. The CSLB's job is That's to protect the consumers. I would like to say at this time, number four, do no harm. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Casey Selkoskis. I am an industrial electrician and a utility electrician with pg and &E. I'm here today to comment on the CSLB committee's perspective recommendation concerning whether a C46 solar contractor should be permitted to install battery energy storage systems when paired with solar, solar volta photovoltaic systems. My strong advice to the committee is to recommend to the full board that C46 contractors shall not be allowed to perform battery energy storage work of any type or size. All California utilities expect the number of energy storage systems in the, in the electricity grid to grow substantially in the upcoming years. California's ga greenhouse gas reduction policies are propelling continuing growth in battery energy storage systems interconnecting to the utility power distribution systems. This increasing volume of interconnections means that the quality, reliability, and safety of battery storage systems will have an increasing impact on the reliability, performance, and safety of the distribution grid. Therefore, utility policy, utilities, policymakers, regulators, and the utility customers all have a stake in the successful integration of energy storage systems from residential to utility scale into our statewide power system. 
To accomplish this, all battery energy storage installations and maintenance must be performed by only C10 licensed contractors who are duly qualified to install standalone battery storage systems. While C46 contractors are licensed to install, modify, and repair thermal photovoltaic energy systems, those skills are not adequate to fully to fulfill the requirements, expertise, and electrical safety skills needed for the battery energy storage systems. The safety of the utility employees, customers, contractors, and the environment to the public at large is of paramount concern, and, and I so urge you to recommend limiting the battery energy storage installations and maintenance to state licensed C10 electrical contractors. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew Christensen. I'm here on behalf of Vivint Solar. Uh, Vivint Solar, we are uh, one of the largest uh, rooftop solar developers here in the state of California. Uh, we've been operating here since 2012, and in that time, we've installed over 66,000 uh, residential rooftop solar systems. In the last few years, we've expanded our offerings to start um, doing rooftop paired with, with storage. We employ both C10 uh, and C46. Uh, license holders uh, within our install fleet. I think my greatest concern is we have now seven, eight years of successful experience of installing rooftop solar uh, now paired with a few years of, of uh, storage. And we have this, this workforce that is trained, qualified, um, and has successfully installed without incident. And I, I'm an attorney by trade, and, and typically you need to show cause or, or a, um, some sort of action to uh, remove, and, and we just don't see it here. There hasn't been any incident, uh, any, any concern in our ability to successfully uh, deploy storage. So I'm here to vote um, for option four, uh, that no change be made. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Zach Goodman. I am a California State Certified Journeyman Electrician, instructor. Um, I'm an adjunct professor at a local u university. I hold multiple degrees, uh, and I'm also an OSHA instructor. Um, associated with any worker working for a C10 contractor, there is training involved. Now, I'm not saying that people working for a C46 contractor are not going to be trained by their specific employer. But what I'm looking for is overall training. So personally, I vote for safety, 100%. And that's it. Good afternoon, uh, Commissioner Beltran, uh, members of the board. My name's Ed Smeloff. I'm the Director of Energy Systems Integration for Vote Solar. We're a nonprofit organization with 80,000 members in California. Energy storage is uh, ready to grow enormously over the next decade. Southern California Edison has said in their most recent testimony at the Integrated uh, Resource Planning Proceeding, we need 9,000 plus megawatts of energy storage in the next 10 years. That's an order of magnitude, 10 times more than what's currently installed. There is going to be enormous amount of work for everybody in this room, for C10 contractors, for C46 contractors, for the electric utilities. And we need to be cognizant not to restrain competition, not to restrain entry into this field because we need everybody's effort. C10 contractors, C C46 uh, contractors have installed over the last decade a million solar uh, photovoltaic systems. And we've had very, very few problems. So we have a quality, quality workforce in both fields. What we need to do today is not to restrict uh, competition. It appears here that you have one small group of one, sub, one subset of one group of contractors wanting to squeeze out, put the others out of business. Paired solar systems with storage is the future. We have the so-called duck curve, where we have, at certain times of the year, too much solar energy in the system during the midday hours. We need to move it to the evening hours, so we need paired systems. We're going to see more and more systems installed on residential and commercial properties that have both solar and storage. And this proposal, if you adopt it, if you adopt the, the first one, it would put 
people out of both the solar business and the storage business, I encourage you to adopt measure to adopt option four. My name is Carlos Ramirez. I'm a safety professional. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. We got 15 years of experience in renewable energy safety, 30 years experience in safety in general, from heavy construction all the way to renewable energy. What I can say to you is there's been a lot of fear thrown about up here about installation systems. Uh, that's what I deal with on a daily basis is fear. I provide safety solutions to the entire industry, not just my employer. Many of you use components that I've designed for your systems. I designed some of your fall protection equipment. I've designed some of your PPE. And I'll continue to do that because my goal is to create a safe work environment for all employees in renewable energy. What is not being said here is the actual numbers. Sunrun is best in class in safety across the board if you look at our numbers. If you look at Solar City's numbers, they were the same way. If you look at some of the other contractors in this room that are renewable energy contractors, they have fantastic safety numbers. By comparison to other industries, we blow them out of the water. Not because we're better human beings, but because we have an intentional effort to save every single installer and to protect every single home that we install on. They talked a lot about fires today and how we have explosions and all these other things. A majority of the issues that occur in someone's home don't occur because of installer error, and I've got empirical data that I can show you that. That's not an installer error issue. These are component failures. These components are new to the industry. They're brand new. Someone just designed them within the last five years. They fail, and they cause failures, and they cause fires. They don't fail because of an installer made a mistake. We know this for a fact because we are constantly trying to improve our install base and make sure that every quality component is replaced that we go to the manufacturer and we challenge them to repair those products, to make better products for us in the future. We train our installers more. I think we train our installers more than I ever trained installers in commercial construction. So we spend a lot of time developing the, these trades. So I just want this committee to focus very specifically on the data that's being given to you. We're willing to provide you Sunrun's data so that you can see our safety numbers. And I'm sure there's several other contractors who will be willing to show you the same. Look at our numbers. Our numbers don't lie. You, you know, we, we can fudge some numbers, but you can't fudge your, your, your safety numbers for that you report to OSHA or your experience modification rate. We're happy to share that data with you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Hi, my name is Travis Dodge, and I'm a project manager for the Renewables Energy Division, speaking on behalf of Collins Electrical, a general electrical contractor with over 90 years of experience here in the state of California with offices in Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto, Marina, and Fresno, California. With our decades of experience in the technical aspects, as well as the installation and maintenance of energy storage systems, our firm advises this committee to, that the hazards associated with ESS systems are numerous and dangerous. Even small residential battery storage units are capable of producing arc faults and shock hazards, many magnitudes more powerful and damaging than a residential PV system. Understanding those hazards, analyzing and safely addressing them takes extensive training and application of hazard mitigation equipment that all of our C10 contractors own and have direct training on. Very few C46 contractors have this type of important safety knowledge and equipment. Beyond a doubt, battery energy storage work is electrical work and should only be performed by contractors with C10 electrical contracting licenses. Our firm needs qualified men and women in the field we can rely on to do the job correctly and safely. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Daniel Barnett. Uh, similar to Travis Dodge, I'm a project manager at uh, Collins Electrical. I'm speaking on, on behalf of Collins Electrical. Uh, although C46 contractors may have some uh, PV training. They're not comprehensively trained certified electricians and do not have the knowledge and training required to safely and effectively install uh, battery energy storage systems of any size. On the other hand, C10 electrical contractors have been installing DC battery energy systems, UPS systems, large power switchgear battery backup systems such as data centers, power plants, and communication installations for decades. C10 contractors and certified electricians are trained and experienced to perform this work properly and safely. They have the specialized tools, the personal protective equipment, and the knowledge to use them properly. They're not amateurs. My years of, ex excuse me, our years of experience tell us that this hazardous battery work should only be performed by C10 
contractors that are trained, skilled, and experienced certified electricians uh, who work for them. Thank you. Hello. Uh, lots, of things, lots of things to say, but many of them have been said, so I'm going to keep this short. Um, Tim Ramage, Peterson Dean. Uh, we are a rooftop and energy storage uh, installation company, um, and I just wanted to highlight one aspect of the economic impact of this decision that's being made that seems very capricious and um, where there is no evidence that my business that I've been building for six years will be drastically re re changed um, by, by this regulation. We have people that have been installing solar and energy storage that have moved up from the ranks. They started on the ground, they're doing the roof work, and now they're lead installers. And they've been doing it without incident for a decade. And you're gonna tell me that I have to go hire a C10. I'm glad to do it. And there's gonna be a great bidding war. It's gonna be great for the C10s because everybody's gonna need them. There is not enough. I need more C10s right now. I try to hire them. They all want to work on the big projects. You know, nobody wants to work at a residential level. The ones that do are great, and they become you know, managers and operational managers and that kind of stuff. There is not currently enough for me to keep up with the 6,000 installs that I want to do. It used to be an, a solar, a energy storage was one, you know, it was 3% of the jobs that we're doing. We've gotten up to like 30% of our systems need this because of utility regulations that are pushing everything to time of use. In this next year, everybody that doesn't have solar is going to be having time of use, and they're going to realize, oh, shit, from four to nine, it, I don't just pay extra amounts the last week of the month. I pay every single day when I get home from work, and that's what's driving this demand. It's utility rate changes that are driving the need for more people. I'm going to have to demote a person that's been doing it for 10 years and say, you have to be a roof installer now. You can't be the lead. There's nothing that you've done wrong, but your certification doesn't qualify. That does not seem fair. There is not the justification for that. Secondly, uh, AHJs see solar and storage as one thing. I get one permit, and I cannot separate those two things and make it work. So thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Ingram. I'm the owner of Michael and Son Solar. I'm a residential solar contractor over in Grayton, California, in Sonoma County. Uh, I'm here to say, on behalf of myself and all solar contractors, large and small, uh, 10 years ago when I got into the field um, through personal passion, I went through multiple solar-specific schools and went through um, the programs and got my C46 license and have been safely practicing uh, solar for 10 years. Uh, that includes battery systems and non-battery systems. Um, everyone that I hire goes through the same process. They go through the classes. They get experience, knowledge. They go into the field and work under somebody to further that experience. And safety is, as it is in everyone's book, number one in mine. Lastly, batteries are currently a hot topic. They are becoming more popular. Um, they are not new. We have been installing batteries for decades, just like the electricians are saying that they have, and they have. We both have, and we're both doing it very safely. There's no reason to require a C10 for batteries. We're very well qualified, and we can and have done it for quite a while. Thank you very much. Good afternoon and thanks for your time. My name is Jim Jenner. I own Fusion Power Design, a very small company, solar and storage installers in Lodi, California. Um, one thing I haven't heard is the fact that if option one would pretty much put me out of a job within five years because within five years, pretty much every PV system in California is going to include storage. It's just how, with the NEMs going out, that's just how it's going to be. So option one would basically put me into solar thermal. You might as well take PV at the same time. Um, option two and three would limit at least half of my business because I go from a 5,000 watt residential to a 300,000 300, watt uh, small commercial system with storage. Um, these are very viable systems for the future and I have a number of clients that want one of these systems within the next couple of years. And this two or three would clearly kick me out of that. Um, 
Option four is the only thing that I can urge you, based on the facts, to vote for. Thank you. Hi, my name is Riley Riggs. Um, I'm a, the C10 uh, managing employee for Citadel Roofing and Solar. We employ about 400 employees. Um, both roofing and solar, we do a lot of new construction, and batteries are where this is going. A lot of new construction is going to have batteries. Um, I've heard it said that batteries are a separate power source, but technically, like, I've got the data, like, it's, it's all tied together. Like, the monitoring for this shows the solar is charging the battery is going to the grid, and this is all wrapped into one system. Um, you can't separate them, really. So, um, and... I have my C10, but honestly, the way I know my craft and how to do it safely was from going to trainings for manufa manufacturers excuse me, um, and learning how to do it. They have it all UL listed. Everything is safe, and you do it per plan. Um, we all, somebody else said, like, we're all beholden to the code, whether you have a C10 or you have a C46. You have to install it per code, and there are plans that you have to have approved before you install it. And after you install it, you have to have it inspected before it gets energized. So the safety aspect is kind of moot, I think. Um, and um, I think that – what was my last – I mean, I just – after I took my C10 test, I felt no more empowered – than I did before I took my C10 test to install this stuff safely and, and make it work. Um, I think C46 contractors have more skin in the game in this, and we have to make sure that the systems work and are safe um, or else we're out of business. And the free market is going to put anybody that isn't a good contractor out of business because their systems aren't going to work right. Seamus Brennan, Sunlight and Power. <clears throat> Providing reliable, safe, and low greenhouse gas power will only be possible with storage. I think everybody in this room knows that. And to be honest, the only way we're going to get there and the only way California is going to lead the way to get there is if everybody in this room is on the same page, including all the esteemed people on the board. We need desperately a new direction, and we need one that maps out a path for all of us to work together. The clock is not striking 12. It is now 12.05. Last month was the 415th consecutive month where the average temperature exceeded the 20th century average. We don't have any more time. We've got the, <laughs> we've, we've got the uh, consent of the brass, we've got the consent of the people, we've got it, if you want to talk about safety, we've got to think about all those folks at home who are going to be relying on that battery storage when things don't go according to plan. It is the biggest challenge of our generation and of this century, and I urge you to please not rule anything out, vote for option four, and let's get this sorted out so that we can all move together and ensure our future. Thank you very much. Uh, Doug Mangione, I uh, represent the uh, IBEW down in Orange County, but I'm a 40-year electrician, and we're hearing all this plug and play, and we're hearing that these systems are tied at the hip, and they're not. In, in the 80s and 90s, we were putting battery storage systems in, in AT&T buildings, in computer rooms, and there wasn't a bit of solar attached to it. This was, these were separate systems. The code treats them as separate systems. The newly adopted code treats them as separate systems. Your own licenses tell C10s what they can do and C46s what they can do. We have been doing this stuff for years. It's not an integral system. Battery storage is not integral to solar. It stands on its own. It utilizes chemical energy to, to uh, make electricity. So. Let's, let's keep that in mind. These things are beyond just solar systems, okay? We've been working on them for a long time, and we're going to continue to do it. 
Your job is to make sure California consumers commercially, residentially, have safe and reliable systems, and they're, they're installed by safe and reliable construction workers and electricians. That's, that's what your main job is, and that's what we need you to do here today. Thank you. Hi there, my name's Dan Martin. I'm with Amp Solutions. It's my company, founder, CEO. I do residential and commercial installs. Everything I do has energy storage. I'm at Otay Mesa, you know, stone's throw from Mexico. I'm in Carlsbad, I'm in Milpitas. I'm doing hotels, I'm doing houses. And uh, I must say, I don't need this fight right now. This is costing me money. This is uncertainty. I'm spending $5 million to do six holiday ends. I don't need to know whether it's a C10 or a C, what's the other number? C46. I drove in my Chevy Bolt performing electrical work all the way up here uh, without a license. And somehow I made it here safely. Somehow the batteries I put in these buildings are behind locked utility rooms. They're behind bollards. They're behind fences and gates. Yet people are pulling in with their Teslas going zero to 60 in three seconds and driving 150 miles per hour. And, so, and suddenly there's all this concern about stationary batteries and no evidence that they've ever started a fire. So this safety thing is red herring. Really, if, if there are safety issues, set, up, set up a bar and make the C46s and the C10s both adhere to that bar. And don't take away business from people that have installed 90% of the energy storage systems to date. That is ridiculous. So I never come to stuff like this. You guys forced me to come here. You need more time to figure out what the safety standard should be and then set the bar equally for both of these groups of people because I need both of them. I love C10s and I love C46s because I need them to do my job. And I can barely make it as it is. I don't need more uncertainty and more cost to get this done. And as many other speakers pointed out, I think the earth is running out of time to uh, do this. Thank you. My name's uh, John Birdner. I work for Enphase Energy. I'm a 35-year veteran of the solar industry. I actually sit on code making panel four of uh, the National Electrical Code, so I am familiar with what's in it. I also am a, f a founding member and current member of numerous UL standards technical panels. Um, I'm also the vice chair for IEEE 1547, which is the interconnection standard uh, for all distributed energy resources. Okay, so. I think I'm one of these experts that your staff never contacted. So it's a little hard for me to understand how the staff did <clears throat> this, uh, contacted these experts when myself or other people I know were not contacted. So that's a, a major problem here. The facts simply show that there is not a problem uh, <clears throat> with C46s or C10s installing energy storage. Enphase is one of the largest manufacturers of residential PV inverters and um, are launching energy storage products. The issue with the fires that we've seen with lithium chemistries are, ba are problems with product standards and installation standards. They're not problems with the training of the installers. We have a very aggressive training program that we run all the time, whether it's PV or whether it's energy storage, and we train those installers, and we see no difference in terms of the quality install between C46s and C10. I urge you to support option four. There's no problem here that needs to be solved. Let's leave it the way it is. You're going to bookend it there, Bernadette? Well, I know I'm not a fresh face, but several of the speakers earlier today did dispute the facts that I presented during my expert testimony. I'd just like just one minute to clear the record. Thank you. Um, so on the question of jobs, um, I, the Solar Foundation's own report, I pulled up these numbers once again in, in this interim period of time. We have, we had 46,000 
installers, the folks out in the field handling equipment and doing the installation work. In 2017, we had 42,000 in 2018. We estimate we're up to 45,000 in 2019. These are well-established facts. We will put this in writing with footnotes. Point we were making with those facts was that, according to IBEW's own numbers testified here today, there are 50,000 combined certified electricians and registered apprentices. You can't simply replace our entire workforce with that available workforce. That was the point we were making. Um, number two on the swimming pools comment, I already addressed this, but I erroneously did not highlight the first bullet point in your report for today's meeting on page 79 that says, at a September 1981 board meeting, members confirmed that it was the intent of the new C46 classification to include the electrical components of solar systems. The electrical components. At the time, we've already well established these were off-grid systems. They did not get installed without batteries. Third, uh, one of your speakers referenced a consumer protection law that I personally uh, worked on. Um, to that same bullet point um, list on page 79, your own uh, enforcement field offices verify that of the 21,000 complaints that were um, registered with the CSLB, not one involved energy storage. And under CSLB's own evidence and their own reports, there is no significant difference between C46 and C10 on consumer protection. Please don't confuse those issues. Another question was about the number of percentage of work being done by C contractors holding a C46 license. Again, if you go through, and we'd be happy to do this in a legitimate process that goes through data with footnoted, resourced facts, that of the 393 paired solar and storage systems that received a rebate through the state self-generation incentive program, program that is just getting off the ground, there are more systems in your report that we have installed without the rebate that are paired. The ones that took the time to get a rebate through this uh, off the ground program, rebate program, 312 were installed by contractors with C46 licenses. This is from your own database. That is 312 out of 393. We are doing the bulk of the work without incident. And then last but not least, what our concern is and our complaint about the process is I brought to you a panel of experts. Those, those, that panel was informing the report that staff took a year to write and presented to you in March. We went through this exact same process this last March in San Diego. And not one piece of evidence in that report citing that there is a safety problem, there are incidents, that there are fires, that there are injuries being caused by the C-46 contractors. This is problematic. Not once were my experts sat down to say, should you draw the line at the residential property? Is that the ra rational way place to draw a line? I made a mistake and I stopped watching the clock. I will wrap up. I've made, I've made my points. Thank you. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. Tom Anselo with Adams, Brado, Joseph, and Cardozo. I'd like to address a few of the comments made by the experts. Um, you know, first of all, the suggestion that C46 licenses are energy storage licenses. They're not. They've never been able to do standalone energy storage systems. There are not energy storage licenses. Second, the idea that somehow what's being proposed here is trying to take away solar jobs. No one's trying to take, replace that, this workforce. No one's trying to take away these jobs. It's the same as you know, what was testified when you have to upgrade a panel and you subcontract that work to a qualified C10 contractor. If you, you still do the solar work, if you're going to add an energy storage system, you subcontract at work, it's just the same. No one's trying to take anyone's jobs. No one's replacing the workforce. There's still the work out there for everyone. Um, f finally, I'd like to make a quick point that, about the idea that we can't take action that would be arbitrary and capricious because there hasn't been actual evidence of any deaths or accidents. That this is not how um, you know, the law works. I mean, under that theory, the state fire marshal's recent updates to the energy storage system fire requirements and the electrical codes updates to safety requirements 
would, ha would have no, it would be arbitrary and capricious as well. I mean, they're based on concerns of harm and technical testimony as to potential harm, and we take precautionary, we adopt precautionary regulations. I and mean, the courts in cases such as Light versus State Water Resources Control Board have clearly stated that agencies have the authority to take precautionary, to enact precautionary regulations to reduce identified risks or prevent future harm, and that's what's being asked here. These are very different systems. We're evolving. Uh, you, you know, there was a study a couple years ago by the utilities that 85% of residential um, uh, um, energy storage systems are under five kilowatts. But you know, right now we're getting commercial systems that are one megawatt, two megawatt. These are almost utility scale systems. You know, what, what's being asked here is that there's no regulation uh, as to what's considered adjunct to solar work. So. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Bernie Cotlier, and I work with the electrical contracting industry in California. Just want to make a few points. You've heard a lot already, so I don't know that I have to uh, beat a lot of these dead horses. You've heard a lot of things. Uh, I will say that in terms of this question about the 45,000 and the 3,800, it is a clear classification. You've, you've seen the evidence. There are 30. 3,900, a little over 3,900 in that classification. This 45,000 number is completely bogus. We've, we've given you the evidence. And I think that's important because you have to really understand who you can believe in these numbers and you can believe your own state statistics. Secondly, I want to talk about this concept of safety. We've heard over and over and over this idea that it's plug and play and therefore it's safe. What is completely missing in this discussion that I think is critical is it doesn't matter how safe a particular device is, it's going into an electrical environment. That electrical environment can be a house that's 100 years old, can be a business that's 50 years old, they have all different types of wiring, they have all different types of breakers, they have all different types of loads. To put that device, no matter how safe that device is itself, into that electrical environment, you have to do a proper site assessment, load calculation. You have to know if the wires are the right size. Are they old? Are the breakers right? What are the other loads? You have to calculate all those things. They are complicated uh, formulas that have to be calculated with math skills that an electrician knows. That's what electricians are trained to do. An electrician has to do that before they can put that device in. It's not the device that's plug and play, it's the total electrical system. There's no such thing as plug and play. Any electrician will tell you that. They have to assess the total situation, the total electrical environment. They have the skills to do that. It doesn't matter whether the device plugs in, it's gotta plug into something that's safe. Electricians are the ones who can calculate that and make sure it's safe. No one else, that's all electrical work. Thank you. Thank you. Now move on to item F, review, discussion, and consideration of the proper classification to install battery energy storage systems and option for regulatory proposals to restrict the C46 solar contractor license classification. We're now on page 67 of your packets, for those of you who have them. For some background, on March 21st, 2019, the board unanimously adopted the following motion. Consider battery energy store, storage system size, complexity, voltage, and potential risks. Draft proposed regulatory language to present to the board for consideration that would prohibit or restrict certain contractor classifications from performing the installation of battery energy storage systems and assign this to the appropriate board or committee or committees and provide updates at each board meeting. <clears throat> Currently, CSLB has authorized licensees in the following four contractor classifications to install ESS, in some cases within, with certain restrictions. A, general engineering, B, general building, C, 10 electrical, C, 46 solar. For the purpose of this section, A and B licenses will not be affected. In May, CSLB executive staff met with leaders of the electrical, solar, and home building industries to discuss next steps. At this meeting, CSLB staff shared its plan to meet with various entities to obtain their insight regarding the development of the proposed regulatory language. A summary of this meeting is posted 
on the CSLB website under the Energy Storage Systems page. Over the next few weeks, CSLB staff had conversation with staff representing the California Department of Finance, California Public Utilities Commission, Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, California Building Industry Association, California Building Officials Association, and the California Energy Commission. Summaries of some of these conversations are included in your packets. As I described during the last agenda item, the board must consider relevant facts and evidence that support the need for any proposed regulation. I'd like to thank staff for presenting the four options that begin on page 72 of the packet and for, the and for providing the facts obtained from its research and information. Collecting and pairing them, will each op pairing them with each option for the committee to consider. The Legislative Committee has now heard the presentations provided by experts today and has heard testimony on this topic over several meetings over the past two years. The members of this committee have also reviewed the facts and information in this packet as well as the Energy Storage Systems Report issued by CSLB staff in March of this year. As a result, the committee is now being asked to consider options for this item. There are currently four options, committee members, for your consideration. I encourage this committee to suggest other options if you have any that you would like to discuss. Keep in mind, today's vote is only to carry the motion to the full board where further discussion will happen. I'll read each of the four current options then I'll ask for public comment. The committee may then make a motion for one of the options to develop its, or develop its own option if they so choose, including directing staff to conduct further research into other options. Note that these options relate only to C46 classifications and make no change to other license classifications like A or B. The current suggested options are as follows, details on page 73 through 79. Option one, recommend directing staff to prepare regulatory language to preclude the C46 classification from installing battery energy storage systems. Option number two, recommend directing staff to prepare regulatory language to permit the C46 solar classification to install battery energy storage systems on specified residential units with restrictions. Option number three, recommend directing staff to prepare regulatory language to permit C46 solar classification to install battery energy storage systems on residential units with restrictions. And option number four, make no change to the existing C46 solar classification. Now, we're going to do public comment. Is there any public comment? It's going to be one minute. Now, we've pretty much heard everybody in this room at least for two minutes, I'd say. <laughs> so if anybody has anything new to say with peace and love. Okay, we got to take her. Fresh face. Go for it. Jeremy Smith here on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council of California. We represent 400,000 construction workers um, throughout uh, 14 different building trades crafts. We stand for uh, health and safety, good wages and benefits, workers being trained for careers, not just jobs, and employing a skilled and trained workforce. We believe C10 holders who do this work, uh, along with their 8,000 hours of training, uh, are not only skilled, trained, and safe, uh, they have a career. They meet all the things we stand for. They and their contractors meet all the things we stand for. Uh, we cannot say the same thing about C46 license holders or their workers. Battery en energy storage in installation is absolutely electrical work, uh, and we urge this committee to recommend C10 contractors perform this work, also known as option one. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Hello, Lauren Cullum with Sierra Club. 
The Sierra Club strongly supported Senate Bill 100, which will move California toward a clean energy economy by 2045, and battery storage systems will be critical elements, along with solar and other clean energy resources, of making this legislation a reality. To succeed, we must have qualified people install and maintain battery storage systems in the safest and most effective manner, whether they are standalone or are paired with solar. For us, that means all battery storage systems from residential to utility scale should be installed only by licensed C10 contractors with state certified electricians. The transition to 100% clean energy economy is an opportunity to build a stronger and more equitable California by bringing clean air to communities burdened by harmful pollution and providing healthy, quality jobs and careers for residents and families. However, we cannot risk the harmful impacts on the environment and consumers resulting from improper installations of battery energy storage systems. Thus, Sierra Club strongly urges the recommendation that battery energy storage work is electrical work to be performed by C10 electrical contractors. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Martin Hertzfeld. Um, I'm an OSHA authorized construction trainer as well for the OSHA 10 and OSHA uh, 30. Um, all contractors need to follow the code. All contractors need to have the general duty clause to have a hazard-free, safe place. Employees should be able to go to work and they should be, be able to go home. Um, and so. Um, yeah, so again, option, no changes, please. 